All right, so we're going to be talking about philosophy YouTuber Stefan Molyneux. Now, I did a video about him a couple of days ago, and you guys seem to like that video. So I wanted to talk about him more in a, a more overarching sense because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to Stefan Molyneux. Stefan, Stefan. Um, because he has a very interesting storyline. So this guy is someone who, again, he calls himself a philosophy YouTuber. He's think I think he has like some radio station called like Free Domain Radio. I don't know. I know he has Free Domain Radio. I don't know exactly what vehicle that is, but I think the main vehicle he has is YouTube channel, which is pretty big at this point. So uh, he has a quite he has quite the dark past. He's got some different things like some he has some weird like women issues of some sort. I don't know like something happened and then he just has held on to that hatred for a long time. Uh, that's what it seems like. He also apparently, there's also apparently a case that he had where he had, basically he said that he, his greed overtook his morals of some sort um, in terms of making money in some sort of way. So there's that's also something to keep in mind. But here's what we're going to be looking at, okay? Stefan Molyneux is supposed to be a libertarian, and he actually used to be a real libertarian when he first began his Freedom Main Radio. Um, I've uploaded some videos, and I'll show you guys the clips here. But now, he's a Trump supporter, and Trump is not even close to being a libertarian, even in the slightest. I mean, the dude's a protectionist, and obviously he has other, um, you know, his immigration views are far from libertarianism. So... What we're going to be looking at here is we're going to do a little bit of a, uh, a flashback here just to try to show you guys my point. So there has been a big divide between libertarians, fake libertarians and real libertarians like Lauren Southern, for example. She tried to be try to act like she was a libertarian, but obviously she's not a libertarian. Um, and that's obviously because the liber one of the main principles of libertarianism is the free movement of labor. And Lawrence Southern doesn't believe in the free movement of labor. And that's going to be a common theme. There's also like a documented uh, Ron Paul, like libertarian uh, to, you know, deep end uh, pipeline is what they call it. And so people who are Ron Paul fans are disproportionately becoming people who go off the deep end. Um, so he now has jumped on the Trump train. That's that's where I think his, his YouTube channel really started going pretty high. And his YouTube channel is very big right now. I don't know the exact sub count that he's at. But um, by the way, the title of this video is The Truth About Stefan Molyneux. That's also a play on what Stefan Molyneux does. Because he has his own series where he just makes The Truth About Blank. And whatever that is, he just inserts what he believes so he'll do like the truth about um like uh what happened to the native americans and then he'll just like talk, go on some like long talk and basically just say what he believes um so the, the title is also a play on what he does in terms of his titles so the clip i'm about to show you guys right now is this guy actually used to defend muslims that's pretty crazy to think about because today stefan molyneux would not ever i repeat ever do that again the guy jumped on the trump train but go ahead and check this out so patently idiotic to feel afraid of mexicans <laughs> <laughs> mexicans undocumented and vote mexicans they're your enemy please this is so non-empirical, it's ridiculous, and I don't even know where to begin. It's such a load of crap to be worried about immigrants. Was it a bunch of wetbacks who were out there jabbering about WMDs at the UN? No. Is it the Chinese community or the Muslim community that is clamoring for the Patriot Act? No. It's pretty much people like you, eh, for the most part. You know, if you're a minority listening to this, yo, brother, perhaps you can teach me how to dance. But it's the whiteies. <laughs> it's the whiteies from Harvard who are shredding your lives with troops stationed all over the world, who are funding the government, who are financing the planet, the state 
prison planet. There's whiteies. And some Jews. <laughs> but it's not Mexican illegals that are taking away your frickin' rights. The other way that I'd like to sort of approach this question, if you will indulge me for a few more minutes, is to picture right? empathy, right? Empathy is really at the root of a good number of principles, especially ethical and moral principles. And I'd like you to think about not how you look to immigrants or anything like that. I'd like you to imagine that you're born in Mexico. I'd like you to imagine that you're born in Mexico. Because being born in America is just a coincidence. It doesn't make you right, it doesn't make you valuable, it doesn't make you better, it doesn't make you moral, it doesn't make any of those damn things. It's just a freaking coincidence. And you can't claim any rights based on where your mother happened to frickin' squat and drop. <laughs> I mean, imagine if she'd been kidnapped and dropped off in Mexico just before you were born. I guess you'd be naturalized U.S., but whatever, whatever situation you could come up with, you happen to be born in Mexico. Maybe your mom donated some eggs to an infertile Mexican woman and boom, your dad was down, <laughs> got drunk, and you happen to be born in Mexico. Now, in Mexico, the standard of living is wretched. Mexico was the first communist country in the history of the world at the turn of the 20th century, and its standard of living has remained mostly unchanged for about 100 years. Now, I'd like you to picture knowing that there's no real difference between Mexicans and everybody else on the planet. Of course, the people who've come to America legally, they're the ones most suffering from illegal immigration. And uh, it is certainly my hope that their voice uh, will prevail in their preferences. And the um, fragile edifice of Western empiricism, self-criticism, and voting above your own ethnic interest is uh, going to prevail. Uh, without it, uh, you know, uh, we are not going to turn Mexico in America into America. We're going to turn America into Mexico and a great and powerful light in the world will go out. And of course, um, and we'll get into, you know, there's this myth that illegal immigrants can't get welfare and can't vote and so on. Uh, this is not true. These are just lies put out by uh, by the left and by a lot of libertarian outlets as well, uh, because libertarians are like, well, you know, freedom of movement and so on. Sure, in an ideal world, you know, where there's uh, small to no government and, and uh, none of this uh, coercive welfare, but private charities and so on, it'd be wonderful to let everybody move wherever they wanted. That was the case in the 19th century. There was no such thing as a passport till the early part of the 20th century. Uh, you could just move and go wherever you wanted. That's a wonderful thing, but that ain't the world we're living in right now. Yeah, and so also, as you guys saw there, he also used to legitimately be a libertarian because he legitimately believed in the free movement of labor. And so he was pro-immigrant and he had, he had, uh, he would say that, you know, his argumentation was basically empathy, human empathy in terms of like, he basically said, you know, well, what's the difference if, you know, you just are born on the other side? Like, don't you have basic human empathy? And, you know... The question becomes, you know, where did that Stefan Molyneux go? I mean, he disappeared. I mean, now the guy jumped on the Trump train, and we know that Donald Trump, the Stefan Molyneux of today and Donald Trump are 180-degree changes from the old Stefan Molyneux, who was an actual libertarian. So what happened to the old Stefan Molyneux to make him into the new one now? And you guys saw the video I made on him. You see the direction he's gone in. That's the direction he's veered on. He's been paired up with Lauren Southern, traveling to other countries, trying to tell them what to do. Um, and, <laughs> and so, what happened? Now, apparently, because, you know, he's, he's a libertarian, and I guess the show wasn't really going off as much as he would like it to. And so, once the Trump train started, there it is. You know, it's a huge opportunity to grow, you know, your brand, your channel, everything. Um... There are videos, and I'm not I'm not uh, going after any creator, 
you know, who basically, you know, ask their viewers for money. I think that's totally fine. I think it's required. And even people who beg their followers, I don't care. But this is the only reason I bring this up is because it, it explains why he did this. There are like, there are videos out there. Um, there's this one channel that's like strictly dedicated to Stefan Molyneux. I forgot the name of it. Um, but there are videos where he would, uh, he would rant about how people wouldn't donate to his show and how, uh, he like, he crapped on someone who donated him like a dollar or something like that. And I was like, dude, like you're a douche. Like, why are you doing that? Like the person donated to you and you're just totally crapping on him. I'm like, wow, what a D bag. But again, even then, like that behavior is ridiculous, but someone, a creator asking their, you know, watchers for money to fund them is fine. I don't have a problem with that, even if they're begging, but this is important in context simply for the fact that that's the reason why he jumped the train. And it's because you up your brand, you up your viewership, you up your subscribers, you up your view counts, you up your listeners. And most of all, that sweet green, that sweet green goes up. So the truth about Stefan Molyneux is he started out an actual libertarian who actually had real principles. Um, and as you guys saw there, the guy was defending Muslims. He was defending Mexican immigrants, making the argumentation of, you know, just basic human empathy and talking about how, um, you know, just because you're born on the other side of the border, you know, what does, what difference does it make in terms of being a human? And there's no way, I repeat, no way, no chance you'll ever see Stefan Molyneux ever utter anything similar to that today because it'll just be too, it'll be bad for his brand. And he's not down to do that. He's not down to have his brand go downhill, especially considering that he's already come this far. But the main point I'm trying to make here is this guy <laughs> has done a total 180. He's a joke. He's a fraud. You, how do you go from being a libertarian to being a Trump supporter? One thing that cannot coexist in being a libertarian and being a Trump supporter, those two cannot coexist. Donald Trump's, basically his entire philosophy is completely at odds with libertarianism. I mean, he outlefted Hillary Clinton on free trade, and that was one of the main reasons that if not the main reason that won him the election, because the Rust Belt states, those are the states where all the jobs are getting shipped overseas, um, and those were the ones that fell. So <laughs> those two cannot coexist. The ideology of Donald Trump is fundamentally anti-libertarian because he does not believe in the free movement of labor, and he's putting tariffs, which is totally, totally anti-libertarian. So you can't be both things. And the point I'm trying to make here is he's not a libertarian anymore. The guy flipped and now he just does a bunch of, you know, Trump videos because he's on the Trump train. I mean, that's that's the train that he is on. And that's the truth about Stefan Molyneux. Again, the title is indeed um, it is indeed one that is a play on his videos because he titles the videos that he does is the truth about blank, uh, which is not really the truth. It's just him inserting whatever he wants to say about said issue, whether it be or said event, you know, like what happened to the Native Americans and things like that. So Stefan Molyneux, he switched his positions because of money and brand. And that's, there's, and especially, this is something that's more of an abstract too. There are a ton of libertarians, and Lauren Southern, again, is a good example of this, who go from being libertarians to then being just straight up non-libertarians and they just leave completely. Um, so I thought that was really interesting and I wanted to talk to you guys about that.